my itchies and scratchies are leaving Trias Multivac and Veracity comments on my other videos, so I guess it's that time of day again where I bust out a new video on price action of Multivac, Veracity, and Trias. I'm going to have to keep this on the shorter side because I have a VIP live call starting here pretty shortly, so let's dive in. Let's start off with Multivac. And again, these are labeled, so if you do want to skip through, I mean, you can, but then again, I promise you, Veracity fans and Trias fans, getting the practice in watching through Multivac, I promise you, whatever Multivac is, it's happening in price, the same thing will apply in your coins, so you might as well get the practice in. It's just like, you know, going, so imagine this, if you're a Trias or Veracity fan, I'm starting with Multivac, um, it, it is essentially like going to uh, the driving range if you play golf, you practice golf, right? You go to the driving range this is your practice or if you you know play soccer this is your soccer practice i promise you so all right here we go let's look at multivac structurally first it doesn't look like it's at a big threat here you got a ton of support here i don't even think it wicked it down to here i'm actually really surprised it stayed this strong i actually i actually can't believe multivac did not dive into that box um let, let me measure from a percentage basis let's say from that wick high yeah that, oh that's why it's 40 percent. okay this wasn't 40 percent dippable what did this wick down oh wick down to these uh to these candle bodies so again if you haven't watched my video on how to buy dips even though it's a kasama uh polka dot and moon river video you need to you need to click that link it's popping up now it's how to buy dips so go look at it and we'll jump back into this because had you done what I described there, you would have been looking for a move to here um, because you would have connected these. I mean, this is this three, four candles and a massive wick. So it honestly, it just came back and wicked down to this wick. That's all that happened on Multivac. So in the future, trying to buy dips, if you see three candle body or four candle bodies and a massive wick where it turned on a dime. So this wick, honestly, so can you see what I hear? So this wick, since price totally turned on a dime, it was a macro move difference, right? That means this has the power of of like four weekly candle bodies i'm telling you candle bodies typically are stronger than any wick but this type of wick is the strongest of all by a mile again specifically when price terms on turns on a dime the other way in a macro sense a move that lasts you know half a year or something like that which this did i believe roughly eh. almost yeah so whatever um you know 35 40 percent of a year that 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 is the most powerful uh I guess, entity within your decision making of drawing weekly horizontals is a wick like that. It's by far the most powerful candle bodies are second most powerful and then typical candle wicks um, are third most powerful. So you can rank these so you know uh, which lines to bold. So by far with that idea. Now, would I have missed this in an analysis before it happened? Possibly. Um, I might not have looked that far back, which is why you zoom out on the weekly. But, um, you know, and I'm doing this in retrospect, so it's easy just to look where price dip down to and say, oh, why does it make sense? But in the future, I did just make a video on how to do this, right? You align candle bodies on the week with wicks, and that's your most probable points, right? So, but honestly, I might have missed this as the most probable. I probably would have been guessing this. I, I would have guessed this probably. Um, even even if that means a 40% dip, I, I probably would have guessed that's my first most probable. This is my second most probable. So I'm doing this in retrospect. Hindsight, you know, bias is 2020, which means perfect vision if you're seeing it already done, right? So um, so you got to know. So the one thing when you're looking back and uh, and doing analysis on why things happen just know that you are naturally going to have a bias of saying oh yeah obviously obviously but but over time when you realize shit i actually can't put that in motion when i click around with my money you have to realize then okay the next time i do analysis like where's my bias so i i so in that sense i can tell you right now i would have thought this was the first most probable somewhere just above this line and i probably would have put this second most probable i want to be honest with you i this would not have been my most probable um, and unless the weekly 10 is right there. So let's actually see. Ooh, maybe it, yeah, actually it would have been my first most probable, <laughs> but just eyeballing it, it would not have been, but with the weekly 10 there. So it's a pretty common play. You wick past the weekly 10, hit the horizontal bounce because you have two groups of buyers stepping in. 
massive horizontal, massive EMA. The, so between those, that's where buyers step in. So buying somewhere between or at the line, trying to get lucky there, it's that's just so, yeah. W had I thrown on the EMAs, I probably would have picked this as my first most probable. And you have an origin line there. Um, see this origin line going like this way? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think I think it looks fine. Uh, it's probably going to bounce right back. So what you might expect uh, when it has trouble is I bet Multivac might have a little bit of trouble getting back above these candle bodies. What did I just do? These candle bodies to like maybe these candle bodies. So when, so you might want to draw this on your chart. Draw a box here. So so I'm on the weekly chart. Just look at where I'm drawing this. So these two so these two candle bodies are slightly higher than these two, right? So pick the more recent ones with the candle bodies of of these three here, the tops of them, and this box. It, it, it um the multivac has the chance of going to the top then dipping again back down to the weekly 10 and then pumping out but once this happens you're gonna not just have a daily 21 horizontal squeeze you're gonna have a weekly 10 ema in horizontal squeeze yeah multi i think multivac is gonna have a good run folks um you know, and I've gotten a lot of YouTube questions like, well, if you think it's going to have such a good run, why don't you own this anymore? Why do you own this anymore? Well, I mean, I already had that. It might be the best trade I've ever had a 36 X trade. Um, and that's just not from what that's literally my buy point to my sell point was 36 X. Like I, I made a lot of money off of it um, in, in one trade, starting with very little. Right. I took four and a half K and made it literally almost to the dollar. I mean, it was to the thousand dollars uh, to 100 K. So I made about 96 K profit. I mean, I'm, I'm good. I, I moved it into something else that I think might have the possibility of doing another 36 X. Do I think multivac is going to 36 X from here? I mean, I, you know, per my analysis, I think it could. But I, I don't own this asset because I think that lower cap coins that i just think they have a stronger probability chance so since so if there were fewer cryptos and i didn't think so many had a stronger probability chance of doing a roughly 36x yeah i would rebuy this absolutely um absolutely and honestly i would have been my goal to buy back was uh was 0.0 um oh so after this after i sold here my i told my whole community i i would have plans to buy back at point um uh, between point double oh seven and double oh five five and that would have been right here and no i was not anticipating wyckoff this never would have happened without whales playing with the market it never would have happened right um but uh, to be fair though that pump to 36x probably wouldn't have ever happened without the same whales because they they manipulated price to the upside first so to be fair, but anyway, I still would have bought back here and from that. But so regardless of being the low or not, like oh, Tim, that's so far from the lows. I don't care. I don't care about buying lows. I care about buying to a point where within a reasonable time frame, I'll be way up on my money. I mean, I'd still be up uh, 3.2 times my money from that purchase. You know, would I have waited a long time to make that happen? Yeah, but so is everybody during that time. So um, but I chose not to buy my buyback point because I went into other uh, coins like um, uh, other coins I've reviewed on here. I, I bought idea uh, fairly heavily. Um, just lower cap coins now if i had to pick a small mid cap coin yeah this would probably be my number one pick even over veracity just on a personal basis personal basis um and uh no is that a sound assessment maybe not i'm just whatever i would just pick it right if i had to pick a small mid cap coin i would probably pick veracity but i'm more of a small cap person because my portfolio isn't in the millions of dollars so i can do that right in order to get to my millions of dollars and then after that then i have to play with mid caps only you know i can maybe throw 10k in small caps once my portfolio the next bull run is in the seven figures but right now you know i i prefer small cap coins it's more life-changing wealth uh from as opposed to buying um uh, you know, any coin, not just multi back at a hundred million cap or whatever it is. Right. Um, so, uh, that's just my mindset. My logic is that the correct, most accurate thing way to think I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just making guesses, honestly. Um, so yeah, I mean, multi back, but multi back among small mid cap coins, this is, this is going to do really well, folks. It's going to do really well. So that's, that's my multi back for you. So let's go on to veracity. Um, oh, oh, actually, before I go to veracity, just zooming in on here, you do need to make that box on the weekly because on the hourly chart, I mean, it, it, it's gonna, it might have a lot of trouble. You just need to anticipate that, but because that's where it's trouble and with a ten, weekly 10 EMA catching up, that's also might be the blast off point is that line. And that line's coming in at point double O two, two, nine, roughly right point double O 
two, two, nine. It's going to have a little trouble, most likely getting over there, right? Um, unless Bitcoin starts racing up to 90K, which it still technically does have time to do it, but just the probabilities, it's under 10% of plan B stuff playing out. It's much under, it's in single digits territory, but it is possible, right? So if, if Bitcoin decides to do that, then it will blast right through it, but I just don't see it happening. I actually kind of anticipate a boring November and December, and then the real fun happens after a dip. Um, I, I just think this bull market is going to last a lot longer than what people are thinking, like deep, deep, deep in the next year past summer right I, that's just what i think but i will be flexible if the charts tell me to change that's a so what i'm saying there is a very loose very loose assessment all right so let's jump into uh veracity next wait who knows what's coming oh wait, wait tim are you gonna like have that that schlong come out of your ear soon uh yeah there it is hey you like that all right hey flip your phone or get flipped off. Flip your phone vertically, because right now it's horizontal. Uh, hit the like button so I can continue making content for you. And also, what's going to help me out even more, if you leave me a quick comment, a period without the tampon, you yell out your favorite uh, your favorite type of pizza, your favorite type of food, or just yell your favorite coin. If you're a fan of, you know, Dash or Monero or Veracity, just yell Veracity, whatever. It's going to help me continue making videos for you. And if you're subscribed, uh, make sure the bell set because it's time-sensitive information. If you're new, hit subscribe, hit the bell, because it's going to help me help you walk through a more profitable crypto journey. We are in this together. All right, let's jump back into the charts all right veracite 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 tampering emotions <laughs> somebody pointed out dude you're saying temper your emotions wrong you're saying tamper i'm like well i have a hick accent okay <laughs> I'm from the middle finger of texas so um but yeah i actually just was uh, mispronouncing that word all right uh veracity let's see what this did on the weekly scale so there again, another dip past. Oh, that was last week. So Veracity is actually held stronger. Good for Veracity. That's awesome. Um, that's actually kind of. So remember my theory, you got to got to get down to get up. Well, since it already got down several days ago, uh, it doesn't have to get down again during Bitcoin's dip. Right. So I told you this dip was healthy for Veracity. It's it's. And take off price, you're getting a skim play on the daily uh, 10 and 21, which oftentimes leads to being just as powerful as a squeeze play where the daily 10 is under. So imagine that line is red and the daily 21 is this. So this is yellow. This is red. Um, and then price gets stuck in here and it squeezes out. Usually these skim plays where the red comes and lands on it like a soft lane, like an airplane, then the airplane just jumps right off. A lot of times those are just, they're just like squeeze plays. It's the same thing. It's just a different setup. Uh, this, this also could be a pretty powerful move, assuming Bitcoin starts to giddy up here, which I expect it will in the third week of November. Uh, maybe later this week. It might, it might hold its horses until Tuesday of next week in exactly a week. But I mean, Veracity really is set up to to do some really good stuff here um what 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 level should you look out for is the question what is it going to have trouble getting over and once it gets over it's going to blast it it might not be a horizontal actually so i'm almost seeing once veracity gets over this origin line here which you probably don't have in your chart because these i drew these manually but just follow it along with me you know um next week that would put it at uh 0.65 cents uh the week after that would put it at whoa is that that no no no, no that's wrong at nine cents the week after that would put it at 9.4 so it's roughly a half a cent each week increasing right so once it gets over this and can close a weekly candle that's essentially your horizontal rule then it'll probably scream up to this horizontal and that's in 20 cent territory right so i i so it's gonna start let me take off these emas it's distracting um so it might so on a daily scale what you might see veracity do instead of tinkering with any horizontal i think it's going to tinker with this origin line which is exactly what uh luna has been doing for a long time um and ethereum actually ethereum's been flirting with an origin line too just hitting an ascending origin line and say that making an all-time high all-time high all-time high like that type of stuff and then once it breaks up then it'll race so it, so origin lines essentially have the same type of rules apply to or it is a horizontal with its axis tilted so i don't think it's going to be as simple with veracity to call a breakout because I, I i anticipate it's going to need to break above an origin line similar to luna and luna hasn't been able to do it in a like freaking 
eight months. Um, you should look at Luna's chart. It's 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 following an origin line and it can't get over it. And and Luna's dips have actually been more severe. It's it's been like an origin line and a half. Luna's been doing this for quite a while, sometimes going like this. Um, but but I don't think veracity is that big of a market cap. So it should uh it should be able to bust up and then once it does, it it I mean it once it gets above roughly nine and a half cents, so this origin line, it could double within a like a week and a half. It, it should be a very, very, very fast ascent. Um, it should double very quickly, which it'll it'll have extreme trouble getting over that. I mean, just look at all time highs. It's the same origin line. It's going to have a lot of trouble uh, end of year getting over maybe twenty three cents. It might wick above there, but before the end of the year, I don't see veracity getting over that point. Um, but once it does, then again, it'll go up to the next one, but it could take months and months of consolidation and ascending consolidation to get back over there. So that's what we got for Veracity. I'm moving on to Tri-Ass. Uh, let's see here. So 30% dip. Yeah, that, that's that. So on a percentage basis, if your run is about two to three hundred percent, usually you only need a twenty five percent dip. So it's satisfied by rule of thumb on a percentage basis. So that's fine um, from a structural basis. Yeah, it's too young of an asset really to use the weekly stuff, so you might have to use like two day candles or something. I'm surprised it didn't poke a little farther down. So what is, so I'm surprised it didn't hit that. Um, so buyer stepped in a lot earlier, which means there's something there. So it might be these wicks here. So there was a lot of trade. So it just, so going down to the four hour chart, it's a very common play in crypto, especially if your coin is bullish that if you form, so check this out, watch, let me get rid of this line. All right. And, oh, and remember the eight hour 21 EMA once uh, actually, let's see how that played out. In that video, I said on the hourly chart, on the hourly chart, once you see the hourly come up, up uh, come below it, then use it as resistance. Okay, remember that? Let's see how that played out, actually. Um, and somebody on Twitter actually, like, embedded, quoted, or tweet. I don't, I don't, I still kind of am confused by Twitter, honestly. Um, but <laughs> like, how to use it, because I, I was forced to sign up by my, my viewership, but, um, like, in May. But, uh, Okay, so here you go. So I said in a video a few a little while ago, the eight hour twenty one is what you're gonna be looking at. So draw it in, go to the hourly chart. Once the hourly goes below it, then use it as a resistance. That's your trouble point. Okay. So let's see how that worked out. Now we're on the hourly chart. Let's take off our EMAs. We only have this drawn in and look at it. Look how beautiful that was. Look. Dip below, got right back above. Dip below, use it as resistance. Dip below, use it as resistance, trouble. Ta-da! Like it's yeah, trading can be simple if you sim if you have simple rules and don't always expect those rules to be perfect 100% of the time, but just know it gives you an edge. So if it doesn't work the first time you try it, but you know somebody like me or another person who's been doing this a while tells you you do have an edge, try it at least four more times. Because out of five, I bet it gets more than three, three or more right, okay? But it, it worked on the first try. So that's, I, I, it's just how crypto moves. Like, I don't know why necessarily uh, outside of buyers and sellers and the disparity of the vectors of force between them. But I mean, that I guess, it, you know, I, I don't want to be sitting here and say I told you so, but it's just that's just common. And so once you get to the point, and you know, not just trading, even if you're a hodler to manage and tamper to tamper your expectations, right, to tamper your expectations, temper your expectations, even if you're not trading, you need to know this stuff because so you don't wake up and say, <gasps> I'm 20 percent down i just spent a thousand dollars yesterday well shit if you follow my channel even if you're not trading you wouldn't have bought first off <laughs> if you're going to be down 20 percent the next day right um but uh but it's just good to know that to temper your emotions right uh so uh what i was going to show you is uh, uh the structure so you have a market structure here the next pump a market structure here next pump right so when a coin is correcting then bitcoin corrects right it usually will go to it often, if not usually, like more than half the time, will at least go to the previous market structure's bottom. If Bitcoin does not correct as your coin does, it will either hit the top or the middle. That's just how it works. So Trias was already correcting before Bitcoin did. It was get hitting the what? The top of this. You see that? 
before Bitcoin went down, it was probably getting, Trias was going to recover. Trias would not have done this without Bitcoin's dip. It would, it, it would have been done like with a strong, strong, strong statistical basis. So market structure, market structure, pre, next market structure. Since you were dipping, then Bitcoin dipped. You pick the bottom of the previous market structure. If Bitcoin does it, if you don't think Bitcoin dips, but I gave plenty of alerts. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I've been calling this since last Friday. I've been telling everybody and people were laughing at me. They even got like people putting, shaking my head and all that stuff. It's like, dude, it's going to dip. <laughs> like, it's probably going to dip. Um, anyway, so uh, so without Bitcoin dip, you go for the top or middle of the structure, typically. And then if Bitcoin dips, also you go for the bottom of the structure. So, it, but if the bottom of the structure is just above something obvious like the weekly 10 or horizontal, you expect a wick down to that, right? But then for it to slap back up to the market structure. So here, that's exactly what happened. And again, I am doing this hindsight bias, but I'm telling you that is that. It, here, let me make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so that is a pretty easy rule of thumb. It, it happens a ton is uh, is going down to this basis and then it should snap actually right back up to this blue box. So once Bitcoin can get close a daily candle above 65 K I'm, I, I would, you could bet your bottom dollar with a strong probability that the day within two days of Bitcoin's closing a daily candle above 65, that trias will be at 21 and a quarter or above. Within two days of Bitcoin specifically closing one daily closing a daily candle above 65k. I mean, hell, even call it 64.5. Um, it trias will be back at 21.25, but it's probably gonna wait till Bitcoin closes a candle above 64 in the 64 to 65k range. Then in, in two days later, it will be here, and that's a pretty big increase, right? I mean, that's that's 23% increase. That's 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 a great trade. I a lot of times in my futures account, I only try to hit like a 5x leverage, um, you know, for about a about a 3.25% move, right? Um, and so, uh, so that gives me about like 18% trade. If, if I'm doing a day trade that I enter and I want to be out of that trade before the end of the day specifically, this is usually my profit taking area assuming it aligns with like structural stuff within that chart on the one hour time frame or 15 minute time frame i typically only go for 18 percent trades on a daily basis and those are not my swing trades sometimes i i do actually i'm trying it's been very difficult to get and stay in them but i've been doing trying to enter a lot of swing trades on on leverage as well so that rule doesn't apply i'm going for much bigger gains on that but it's so hard to get into a trade and stay because you know you have to protect yourself from downside so you get stopped out you got to re-enter i mean shit on like on a few coins i'm i'm on the process of re-entering you know uh about the sixth or seventh time but the majority of those i move my stops up and profit up and profit then when bitcoin tanked i actually had more money and then i could re-enter lower with more money so in the end once it finally takes off my swing trades will actually be more profitable but it's it's a different type of trade they're so much more frustrating it's almost like uh, what i tell my community when i when i show them good entries and stuff during vip calls which i need to jump on here shortly um i i say that so the advantage of those day trades going for 18%, you're in and out. It's actually much less stressful, but it does take more screen time, eyes on it. But you can do, but you, you don't have to do just one trade. You can find multiple altcoins that are, has have a similar setup, right? And you get multiple 18% trades in a day. So technically you're doing more than 18% on that trade um, or on, on your trading day. But um, I'm almost having a brain fart. Oh, but what I always say to them is, on your swing trades, yes, these are going to be big, big profitable numbers. I mean, like as in 500% trades uh, if Bitcoin gets hot in December, or late November. Um, but you need to know that swing trades on futures. And so this is your bonus for staying to the end of the video. I, I try to always, I try, I'm trying to put a bonus at the end of the videos without tags. So people watch to the end. So you're rewarded for it, right? I want to force you to stay till the end. I'm going to handcuff you to the bed and make you watch this iPad, right? All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to get kinky, um, uh, but anyway, and most of my viewers are guys anyway. So anyway, um, but uh, it's it's like it's it's like having a baby in your arms, right? So that sounds cute, but it's actually your baby. It's not somebody else's. So it's more like a lot of work than it is just holding a baby like, OK, all right, the baby's going to have it back, right? No, 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 no. If you're in a swing trade on futures, that baby's yours and that baby poops. 
like every hour it's a newborn and it cries for food every hour right and poops and poops while it's eaten <laughs> so like you have to be holding a bottle change your diaper with one hand to get peed on in the face of its boy like it is a pain in the butt to get into swing trades on futures because you have to baby it until you're super far in profit the only one that i've been far enough in profit really to, i haven't had to piss with for over a month is dash because i called it caught it at 177 and i gave an alert out to my community about that as well um, I've been far enough for profit where I haven't been wicked out in profit. Um, but, uh, but it's a pain. So I wanted to, you know, and so if you like that type of bonus stuff, I mean, this is basic, like this is the basic things that I drill within the community as well. Um, so if, if this, you know, that type of content, more in-depth content, the things that can, you know, give you an extra strategy among your altcoin spot trade strategies, but future strategies, if you want that kind of stuff, go ahead and click uh, the link that is near the top of the description section to check out the Patreon Discord community, and then we'll be rolling. And, you know, new viewers, if you liked what you saw here in about, 10 seconds there are going to be two videos popping up here okay those are um those are in my playlist of about four videos now that are the most important videos i've ever made and if you're new to crypto you need to watch it because it's going to drastically change your basic understanding of how price moves and you're going to make so much more money in crypto i'm telling you you should click on those now and go watch those but before you do Flip your phone vertically, flip your phone to get flipped off and to make sure that bell is hit. Make sure you've subscribed. Y'all just got timified. Are you happy, itchies and scratchies? There you go. There's your video.